Hello friends and welcome back to another Pokemon VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today on the channel we're going to have a little bit of a, a different video. We're going to have a dubbed over video because unfortunately I recorded this episode a few nights ago, got to the end of the video and realised that I hadn't got my mic on it was muted I was really devastated because this is really a generally great episode I I kind of reached out to you guys to see if you wanted to see the battles and me dubbing over it so here we are um, and we're playing the GMAX Gengar team that we featured on the channel Thursday evening uh, if you haven't checked that out do go and check that episode out another great episode with this team Perish Trap team GMAX Gengar GMAX Lapras and um, made up around the Lipod the Incineroar Gothitelle and Conkle there um, the link to the last episode will be up in the description but I hope you enjoyed this one this uh, I did make the joke about a badly dubbed Bruce Lee movie and uh, it's already feeling like that with me sitting down in the corner just uh, not making any sense to what I'm actually saying but if you can get aside that we'll get into the battles I'm gonna just skip right forward into our first one today because there's no need for intros or anything like that so as always if you do enjoy this sort of content Obviously not the, the dubbed content, but actual content with me talking. Do drop a like on the video, do subscribe to the channel for this sort of content, more Pokemon news content and guides and all those goodies. So uh, we'll get into it and we'll look for our first opponent and like magic we've found Albos. So let's get into the team preview here. We can see that Albos is running Conkledur, Excadrill, the Rotom Wash, Dragapult, Arcanine and the Togekiss. So it's pretty hard kind of rest retrospectively me looking back because I know what to expect from this team but if you're looking at it from face value um, it's kind of a standard looking team you know you've got the Trick Room cover there with the Conkledur, um, you've got Redirection obviously works super well, Togekiss, the Dragapult and the Excadrill all making up that fantasy core there and then the Arcanine with its Intimidate support, got utilities like Safeguard to help against spamming um, uh, status and things like that, and then the Rotom that could be a bit of a threat. Kind of, I'm in a little bit of a way because of the Dragapult, uh, kind of put off by bringing the Gengar and Lipod lead here because Dragapult's such a threat to Gengar, especially if it does max and it's bulky like we've seen those weakness policy variants running around recently. Um, but at the same time, I don't really want to bring Lapras because of the Togekiss Rotom lead that I kind of feel like would probably maybe suit my opponent a little bit better which is why I've went down the route of going with the Gengar on the Lipod pick here because uh, with the Lipod we've obviously got the copycat where we can get the Perish Song up if we are G-Max and we also have access to Thunder Wave that can shut down the Dragapult and allow Gengar to kind of get a turn off prior to it attacking or doing whatever it wants to do setting up and um, the only issue here would be Dragapult leading out with something like Togekiss but even though we don't have fake out on a lipod, we can still kind of pressure my opponent into thinking that we got fake out to to force maybe a turn where we can get a little bit of an advantage with our, our G Max Gengar. And at the end of the day, you know we got the sash and the Gengar, so it's not the worst thing in the world. We are able to take at least one attack from the Dragapult and uh, get an attack off. And if that means trapping in something like the Togekiss and going from there, that so be it. We'll play around and we'll take things as they come. So we are going to see my opponent lead off with the Arcanine Dragapult. Um, straight away you know you have to identify here is this a beat up um, Arcanine uh, Dragapult combination because it's something that we saw very early on in the season and it's something that we need to deal with uh, commonly you see the Dragapults on these teams have potentially a sash it's a bit like the Dragapult colossal combination you know you want to make sure that your Dragapult is supporting that Arcanine if that is the strategy but we're just gonna G max here um, and go for a Thunder Wave and double into that Dragapult. Now, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. It could kind of go against us. Um, but what we're hoping for here is no Sash and not a bulky Dragapult. There is the chance that it could Dynamax here as well. So that's something that we need to watch out for. But um, we'll see what happens as we get into this turn. As we uh, are going to see a Dynamax from my opponent's side of the field. And uh, which one will it be? Uh, let's see. It is going to be the Arcanine. Okay, so it is looking like it's going to be that beat-up combination with the Dragapult there going to the beat-up onto the Arcanine, activating that justified ability, getting that plus 
four attack and uh, then things go terribly wrong after that but we do land the thunder wave onto the dragapult here so that's a good start for us and uh, no protect there or uh, phantom force which is great although the thunder wave would kind of prevent that anyway um but we do get the g max terror into that slot no slash and pick up the knockout onto the dragapult which means if it is the the beat up combination like we're kind of suspecting that there is no beat up there and the arcanine just has to go for a plain old attack uh, unboosted it is into the lipod unfortunately we do lose our ability to copycat here uh, and the arcanine does get an attack boost so we're not going to be able to get off that kind of max guard copycat perish song play this next turn but it's not the end of the world we're still in a decent ish position uh, and we've got to make a decision here do we bring in gothitelle or do we bring in lapras now lapras probably isn't a bad idea right now for the perish song uh, if we want to go down that route or oh, we could bring in gothitelle because it's got access to fake out and whatever comes in next to arcanine we can fake it out with the gothitelle we've also got the trap then activated even though the arcanine is still trapped we can trap the other pokemon coming in and gothitelle's generally a little more bulky uh going to be able to take attacks probably a little bit better from arcanine than than lapras right now because you've got to be worrying about the wild charge that the arcanine's probably carrying uh we do see my opponent bring in the excadrill here so the excadrill does threaten the gengar like massively with high horsepower it's grand stabs and all that so but um the one thing that we do have the the choice the decision to bring gothitelle was a good one because we now can stop the excadrill from attacking um now my train of thought here is because we've got the sash on the gengar we go for a max ooze boost our special attack here on the gengar so the next turn we've got the option to take down the excadrill or the arcanine because we are faster with a boosted um max terror so you can see the fake out into the gothitelle the max ooze here into the arcanine i'm not really scared at this point for gengar because we do have the sash right like we've got that little line of security whatever the arcanine decides to throw out if it does go into the the gengar then we're, we'll be fine we'll go down to our sash but they're opting to go for our gothitelle that's fine we're, we're nice and bulky anyway so we're able to take that plus one boosted flare blitz and um, now the sun's up that causes a, a little bit of an issue uh, for us for sure because now the the max flare will be able to obviously take down the gothitelle this next turn um or take gengar down to its sash um now the option is do we target the arcanine or do we target the excadrill here now um because we've got a sash i'm more worried about the excadrill attacking into the the uh, the gengar here it could protect um and stall at the last turn of the g max from us but i think like um, if we can get this knockout here, it really makes it a lot easier for us at the end of the game. Again, the Gengar's still got its sash intact, so we're not too worried about that. And if we lose Gothitelle at this point, it's not the end of the world. We've still got Lapras in the back to come in, help support the Gengar, and, and potentially get a Perish Song off. And that's uh, if that if it comes down to that. Um, but we are plus one now after that max who's the last turn so we should be able to pick up the knockout onto the excadrill we actually opt to protect here the gothitelle just in case we see the arcanine attack into that slot and um, we do get the g max terror into the excadrill so we do pick up the knockout there it's a nice clean one hit kill um, and the arcanine going for a max flare and it will be into the gothitelle again okay so that protects pretty nice um, and actually making sure that the gothitelle can actually survive in the, that's quite a big thing here because my opponent down to their last two pokemon we've got the option now with our gengar where we can potentially click the perish song button um, and if we do that then we've got at least three pokemon where we can switch around to kind of stall out these perish song turns if that's what we choose but at the same time gengar's still got its sash uh, it's plus one so the sludge bomb is likely to pick up the knockout onto the arcanine so we've got a, a clean easy way to get the arcanine here and then all we need to do is deal with a conqueror that probably hasn't got a very good way to hit the, the gengar for super effective damage you're going to be relying depending on the build on something like ice punch or thunder punch here from the conk um, and the gothitelle can potentially pick up uh, some big damage with a psychic onto the conqueror obviously being a fighting type pokemon it is weak to that but um Opting to double in just in case we miss the kill on the the Arcanine here with the Gengar, um, just and if we do take it down, then obviously the uh, the Psychic would redirect into the Conqueror, but it's not going to be the case here because the the Conk we see does protect um, the extreme speed coming out from the Arcanine 
take down the Gothitelle and the Sludge Bomb like we expected does take that Arcanine down after the, the boost from our G-Max turns and uh, you can understand the protect here from the Conquer though because it is Guts. Um, making it a little more tricky for us to deal with because now the one thing that we've got coming in is the Lapras. It's weak to fighting type attacks and the Drain Punch could be quite quite useful for it. So what we're going to do is just protect our Lapras. We don't want to give the Conqueror any chance to regain any health because uh, Sludge Bomb here, two Sludge Bombs should be enough to pick up the Conqueror even without the boost. So we're sitting in a pretty nice position and um, I think this game is quite interesting because it shows a side of the team uh, where we're not having to rely on the Perish um, trap to actually win out a game. Um, and just the sheer kind of brute force of Gengar and its speed um, and, and with the security of the Sash, how disruptive and, and, and damaging it can be to um, an opponent, uh, especially against a team so kind of... I would say quite high offensive in itself um, and we kind of went toe to toe and we've come out way on top here um, and the Gengar you see just picking up the, the final bit of chip damage onto the conch and uh, we do pick up a win so yeah like I say we didn't get the uh, the Perish song or the Perish trap going in that match but you know it's fine because like I say it's good that a team a Perish song team can I think perform without its Perish Trap as well as with its Perish Trap. Like it's going to thrive in its Perish Trap environment, um, but if it can still perform well without relying on that kind of main strategy, then I think it's quite a cohesive and uh, very well built team, in my opinion anyway. And uh, the team already obviously have had more matches, uh, games with the team since this episode, and I still stand by the team and I think it's a very strong team. It's very fun as well to play around, but I think it's quite well balanced so we'll go into our next match uh, we will have a search I'm just gonna try and skip forward and see if we can just speed things up here as we do find our next opponent who is Ray and uh, we'll have a look at what Ray is gonna bring to this matchup we've got Ray playing a Raichu, Snorlax, Lapras, Charizard, Blastoise and Venusaur so it looks like the infamous Reds team uh, I think Mr. Glick has been playing this on his channel recently uh, trying to get it at number one I believe I haven't seen it but I've seen the thumbnails and tweets and things about it so uh, I'd imagine this is what the inspiration is except uh, obviously in Reds team he had a Pikachu not a Raichu and uh, Ray's just opted to evolve that um I mean pledges are quite quite uh, uh, an obvious thing that you could run on this sort of team and um, G Max Charizard's probably going to be uh, the Pokemon that we see we've got to be um, I mean G Max Lapras as well the Snorlax is a bit irritating um, but I mean with something like Perish Song you're not really relying on ways to damage your opponent it's more ways to get how to get the Perish Song set up without like losing Pokemon and then kind of having ways to stall them out and, and for that reason I want a secondary Perish in the back I do feel like this is uh, an opportunity where we can potentially get the, the trap and then the Perish going with Gengar so we'll see what we can do here um, I've obviously got things I need to fear. The Venusaur uh, with the Sleep Powder can be really disruptive. Uh, if it does max, it's obviously got access to max quick. It can be pretty disruptive and, you know, annoying for Gengar to deal with as well. But uh, we're not going to see that first off. We are going to see um, the Raichu and the Lapras here as Gengar and Lipod make their way for ourselves. So got to worry about a potential fake out from the Raichu on uh, my opponent's side of the field onto Lipod. It is going to be the faster fake out user so it would make sense that it does fake out into Lipod at least. Um, this turn, we, you know, if it doesn't decide to go for that then you've got to worry about potentially a nuzzle into our Gengar to really slow it down. Um, which is the other issue here. Um, we could potentially go for a fake tears into the Lapras um, and that would mean if we are able to get it off we're going to get some big damage on before the potential uh, Auroraville set up with the, uh, the G-Max move there from that side because that's what you've got to expect them to go for. I mean you're leading with Lapras, you're going to probably go for the, the G-Max here and you're going to get your, your Veil up um, as soon as possible to uh, support the rest of this, this match in the, the team on your side of the field. So. We do max our Gengar here, uh, and I think we are going to see. Look at that dive ball. That's the ball that you want your Lapras in. There's a good example here. Ray showing everyone that we should all have our Laprases and dive balls. Um, I'm a little bit biased, obviously, because 
if you if you've been following the channel for a while now you'll know that the dive ball is my favorite poker wall of all time so um the bias is showing through slightly but we do see the fake out from the raichu now into the lie pod so we're not going to be able to get that fake tears off but it's not the end of the world because we are going to get our G-Max Terra off and uh, hopefully Lipod can kind of see out this turn. I've just got to say the animation for that G-Max move is incredible. I love the kind of Gengar face on the floor. It just looks really cool. And then you've got the ghouls kind of coming up at the end of the... You pay attention to it. It looks incredibly good. Um, okay, so it's into the Gengar. That's fine. We take that pretty comfortably. Um, not something you commonly say for a Gengar, but with a, a G-Max form, it's fine. And we're in a position now where we can go for the, the copycat uh, Perish Song play. Finally, into the episode. We're quite deep in so far, so here we go. We're using the Max Guard, which is based off our Perish Song. And then we go for the copycat with our Lipod. It's got the priority Prankster there, and we set the Perish Song on all of the Pokemon on the field so it's uh, three turns and then everything will faint we do see the Raichu throw out a nuzzle into Lipod here you got to remember as well that um, we can't make use of our Thunder Wave now because of the potential lightning rod on the Raichu there so we're not going to be making much use of that so probably good that we try and um, make use of uh, if we keep it in you know something like fake tears but we've got a pretty decent double switch here you know and um, max guys are probably going to come out from the lapras on my opponent's end uh lipod like um sorry the right you likely to go for a nuzzle into our gengar so we'll preserve gengar for later on in the match and uh, i think one of the things to try and remember when you're playing perish is if you've got opportunities to keep your pokemon alive like you know normally you'd be like right well if i sack this here it gives me the opportunity to bring in x and then i can really start building some momentum with kind of a little bit of the opposite with perish song even if you've got like one or two hp it's worth keeping that pokemon around so you've got a switch later on which is like essentially one turn that could be the perish song counting down for your opponent and you win in the match so it's really important to just keep that in mind if you are playing perish trap uh, we do get the double switch in which is nice we've got access to fake out now which is brilliant so we can then um, stop the lapras from attacking here we've still got the trap active obviously with our gothitelle um and we've got the option to potentially just protect with our lapras if you want but it's probably better to attack here um and attack maybe into something like the lapras um you know and uh, we could double up fake out into the lapras if we're not too worried about what the raichu does but uh, you've got to worry about the raichu potentially having vault switch here so i think that's something that's playing on my mind definitely uh, i don't want the the raichu to vault switch out and kind of undo the the perish song trap that we've kind of set up so far so we're taking a little bit of a risk and doubling into that slot here and i think it's the the right thing to do because um like i say the the lapras can't really damage our Lapras too hard um, and it can potentially pick up the knockout onto the Gothitelle but uh, like I say with the Raichu I'd rather get rid of it right now and um, it does cause the team in general some issues especially if we can get nuzzles off and things like that but uh, we just see the protect on the Raichu here and uh, the opposing Lapras actually setting up its own Perish song so setting the Perish song on our side of the field so our count is now three their count is now one um, and all we need to do now is just double protect um, and then we will say good night to Miss Lapras and Mr. Raichu or oh, Miss Raichu and Mr. Lapras however well no look the, the Lapras I'm not being um, gender specific in any way but the Lapras and the Raichu Raichu's male Lapras is female here we go no <laughs> I've got to be so careful. I feel like I've got to be careful. Someone shout me out for it. Um, anyway, yeah, double protect coming off. Let's just fill some time because uh, the inevitable is coming. And my opponent going to be down to their last two Pokemon in uh, the, the coming minutes here. And uh, all we need to do after this, depending on what they've got, if we can get a Perish Song set up with Lapras, that will mean we are going to be able to, um, to close this game out with just a Perish and not pick up any knockouts with any damaging attacks which is exactly what you want with a perish song team now we do see the snorlax hit the field now for my opponent and the blastoise now the blastoise definitely is not the one thing i want to see in rain because uh there is the threat of firstly 
Faker from the Blastoise that can disrupt our Perish Song. Uh, there is also Water Spout as well. It would pick up the knockout onto our Gothitelle and make closing out this game pretty difficult. Um, now what we're going to do is just click the Perish Song button with our Lapras. I think we just got to go for it here. Um, the other thing that we've got to worry about with the Snorlax is, as well is um, potentially a Belly Drum. But um, opting not to go for... Uh, a keep Gothitelle in and attack we just uh, bring the the light pod in and um, it's the one thing that we got paralyzed here um it's not going to offer us too much here body press coming out which is a little bit surprising a nice tech there on on blastoise um but we do manage to get a perish song up and that is all that matters right now and perish song is the the big play here for us and now all we need to do is stall out some turns lipod does go down which is great because um doing this means we get the Gothitelle out to get it back onto the field now and have access to that faker which is exactly what we want um our perish song count on our lapras is dropped to one so we need to be mindful of that this next turn we also reset our perish song count on our gothitelle so that's a that's a nice way for us to get it back in and also make use of fake out now on our gothitelle so to keep lapras around we're going to switch out to gengar at this point we're going to fake out into the blastoise because i think out of the two threats that we've got in front of us right now i feel like the blastoise with the water spout is a bit more deadly um than the snorlax it could potentially go for a double edge into our lapras slot and then you know gengar coming in being a ghost type isn't affected by that so it's a pretty clean turn for us in that respect um we do get gengar onto the field now and uh, get that tasty old fake out into the blast toys stop it from moving this turn with a flinch and uh snorlax opting for a rock slide so it's still not the worst turn in the world um we've reset the perish on our side of the field all all things going well right now stop the blast toys from moving uh, the citrus berry gonna activate on a gothitelle just get a little bit of health back and the rain does stop which is nice especially to um to weaken the power of those blast toys moves so uh, we've got the option here where we can just double protect and that'll take my opponent down to their their final perish song count turn and uh, after that they will they'll be able to um well they'll not be able to do anything because with the lapras in the back it doesn't matter what we do we just switch out either the gothitelle or the gengar here into the lapras the next turn um or we just let both of our pokemon go down here um, <clears throat> there isn't really too much my opponent can do now and uh, with the Lapras in the back this game is certainly locked for uh, for the big whim the Auroville wearing off there they're fine down to their final turn of their perish and uh, we'll just go for a sludge bomb uh, switch Lapras in or Gothitelle we'll keep Gothitelle around for the end I think I say here as well we should have probably just switched just for the glory of Gengar we should have uh, and it's all about the Gengar here we should have just switched the Gengar out really kept that for the la being the last Pokemon um, but never mind Gengar's put in a lot of work and Gothitelle can claim some glory it's normally overlooked but it is a very key element to this team and how it operates especially with the Perish so my opponent just uh, thinking about what they're going to do. But I think the inevitable is in sight for them. The, 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 you know, because we've got three Pokemon, it just makes the the, the, the battle locked for us, really. And uh, we do see the uh, the cancelled uh, cancel battle there from Ray's side of the field. And we do pick up another win, which is incredible. So we've had two really good games uh, with this team. And uh, this is why I was so sad about not... Um, having my mic on for this episode as well i feel like it was a really good way for us to kick off and introduce the perish song team and um i do also remember to put the rental code we'll just skip to that right now at the end of the video and uh, that wraps everything up for us my friends so i uh, i hope you've enjoyed this one it's been a little bit weird with the dubbing and things like that but um i hope the battles have been enjoyable and uh, i hope you've appreciated that um even though we had some technical errors, we've kind of tried to make up the video in some sort of way. And um, the Bruce Lee dubbing has been interesting. It would have been great if I could have just taken myself out of the picture here, but never mind. Here is the rental card for the team. If you do try it out, please let me know what your thoughts are on the team. If you've got any thoughts about things you would change, I would love to hear your opinions and uh, things that maybe suit your playstyle a little bit more than what my playstyle is. Um, so have fun with it, friends. Uh, enjoy the, the rest of your day. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you all very soon for another video. So until then, take care of yourselves. 
and bye-bye.